Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Well, we've got a full house today. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate that you're going to be here to celebrate the graduation of these incoming teachers. My name is Howard Smith. I'm the Dean of the College of Education here at Pitt State. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the campus today and to the Bicknell uh, Perform uh, Family Performing Arts Center. And we're in the Miller Theater today. We are being live streamed, so it's kind of like being on TV. So I'm a little more nervous than usual. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta slow down a little bit. This is actually our 14th ceremony. We started this several years ago. And what we wanted to do was have a method to recognize the importance of teachers entering the profession. And that was how this, this originated. And so this is the 14th ceremony, and we actually have one of our speakers today, we notice, has gone through this. So it's kind of neat to see that it's coming around at this point, that we have experienced teachers that have participated in this because it's relatively new. I would like to recognize some special guests that are with us this morning. Cooperating teachers, if you would stand. If we have cooperating teachers in the audience, if you'd stand. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank, thank you for being here, but more importantly, thank you for partnering with Pitt State. The lessons that are learned in your classrooms by the, our student teachers are invaluable. Their success is wholly dependent upon those partnerships, not only with our faculty, but with the field. So we thank you very much for your service and your participation with us. I'd also at this time like to ask the faculty and supervisors and staff from the, that, in the licensure programs here at Pittsburgh State to stand, if you would. Any, any faculty, staff, supervisors in the licensure program? Let's give them a round of applause as well. And that's the second leg, you might say, of the three legs that provide the experience for the student teachers here. The faculty at Pittsburgh State are outstanding. We have a tremendous amount of success with our student teachers in placement. And that in the last few years, there's certainly been a lot of challenges in education. And there's a little feedback coming back there. And one of the things that, that's, that's really important, and, and honestly, I want to thank the student teachers out here today. This is a tremendous field to enter. And you're cho choosing to come into it, actually at somewhat of a controversial time sometimes, is most appreciated because you're going to impact a lot of lives as you get in those classrooms. So thank you for entering the field. And importantly with that is the third leg. And that's university support here and personnel. Those of you that serve in offices, they're not in the academic colleges, but career services and the other uh, administrative offices on campus, if you would stand, we'd like to recognize you as well. And let's give them a round of applause. You know, it takes, they say it takes a village to raise a family, and that's exactly what we have here with the amount of support that we have at the College of Education at Pittsburgh State University. Tremendous support uh, to help our graduates. Now it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce our guest speakers and award winners this morning. Mrs. Kendall Patterson and Mrs. Julie Laughlin, who are up on the stage with me. The College of Education recognizes one outstanding elementary and one outstanding secondary school teacher who have distinguished themselves within the first years of service and exhibit the potential to make significant contributions to education. This year, our elementary level recipient, Kendall Patterson, is a first grade teacher at Chinute Elementary in Chinute, Kansas. I'm going to ask Kendall to step up. Well, I say a few words about her. She has taught in Chanute for three years. Prior to that, she taught at Westside Elementary in Pittsburgh. Kendall received her Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education from Pittsburgh State University in 2013. She is a first generation graduate in her family. Kendall was the mascot at her high school and also played softball at KU and UMKC. She is a charter member of the Chanute Elementary Building Leadership Team. After attending a conference on response to intervention in a professional learning community, she, along with three other teachers, worked with the administration to form a building leadership team. The group has reevaluated grade cards and essential outcomes and are currently working with the student intervention team to make sure they are meeting the needs of all students in their building. Clint Kendall is also a class dojo mentor ambassador. 
Class Dojo is an online behavior management system, and during her student teaching at Westside Elementary, she gave a short presentation to other teachers about how to begin using Class Dojo. Later in her teaching career, she was asked to become an ambassador with other mentors around the world. Kendall loves photography and is putting the hobby to good use. She began the Chanute Senior Photos Project. With the help of Chanute High School principals and counselors, they selected a senior student that was in good standing and need of senior photos. The chosen student had recently lost her mother and was living with extended family, so they had little funds to pay for professional senior photos. Kendall met with the student, took photos, edited them, and sent the prints to the student so that she could share this special moment in time with her family and friends. She plans to continue helping a student each year in this way. Kendall has served as a mentor teacher. She was a Horizon Award nominee and a 2015 district conference math presenter where she helped lead a presentation over mathematics that would engage other educators in the district. She is an active member of the Friends of Chanute Library, the Southeast Kansas Women in Education Group, and the Chanute National Education Association. Supporters of Kendall said this, she is simply outstanding. Have you ever walked into a classroom and just wanted to stay? You knew the material and were way past elementary school, but the excitement for learning just kept you lingering. This is the feeling you have when you're entering Kendall Patterson's classroom. Although Ms. Patterson is just beginning her professional education career, she has the promise of blessing many students now and in the future. Kendall made a difference even before the first day of school in 2013. Her commitment to achieving excellence began when she started working on classroom preparations right after she was hired in the spring of 2013. She participated in Chanute's annual summer institute, was at school day and night over the summer, and continues to know the differences between contract time and what it takes to do the job. In the classroom, she exhibits the same enthusiasm when teaching. She is a master at applying technology into her lessons allows class, her class numerous chances for brain breaks and differentiates lessons to meet the needs of all students. As a member of the staff at Chanute Elementary School, Kendall Patterson is a positive influence. She created a brag board for other teachers to show appreciation to their peers. Kendall has successfully completed the first year teacher mentoring program and as a second year teacher was chosen to be a mentor teacher. Her active involvement in Chanute Building Leadership Team has a great example for all teachers at her grade level. At the start of the school, Kendall was very supportive. She would tell me stories about what it was like her first year, what she struggled with, and how she fixed it. As my mentor, Kendall meets me every Wednesday to talk about how my week is going. She was always willing to talk about anything and everything. She has given me many creative ideas on everything from student behavior to how to differentiate for teaching. I know that Kendall always has her open door and is always ready for any situation. For the record of service she has created and for the potential that this record represents, Pittsburgh State University proudly recognizes Kendall Patterson as the College of Education Outstanding Elementary Educator for 2016. Kendall Patterson. Good morning, teachers. I am extremely nervous being up here. I'm used to talking to six and seven year olds all day. And I was already nervous to come up here and then I found out the lovely lady that's following me is a speech teacher. So she's gonna do a really awesome job and I might do a lot of stuttering up here, so. Okay. <laughs> You've all worked tirelessly and now you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You've stayed up working late nights finishing lesson plans, grading papers, only to get up a few hours later to get ready for school and put your best foot forward for your kids. If you look around you, there's all these people here today that are here to celebrate with you your decision to take on the most important profession and the hard work that you've put into it. I wanted to share some advice with you today, but this advice didn't come from me, so I can't take credit for it. The advice that I'm here to share with you is from my first graders. I told them that today I was going to meet lots of brand new teachers who had just finished college and they begged me to come meet you, but I told them that I wouldn't be able to do that and let them skip school. 
So I told them I could bring you some words from them. Here's some of the things that they had to say. Three of my students said, a good teacher takes us out for recess and extra recess. <laughs> Two other students said, always say good morning to your students when they come in. A few other students had some ideas for classroom management for you. Tell the kids they better do all their work. You can tell us whatever you want, but you can't spank us. <laughs> Another student said, you need to know all your kids' name in your class. Names in your class, sorry. Three of my students wanted you to know how valuable their time is. They said, if you have a schedule, you'll know what to do. Make sure you do the schedule right. <laughs> Another one of my kids said, you've got to get the specials right. For you secondary people, that's PE, art, music, those things. You've got to get the specials right. If you take your kids to the wrong specials, it wastes our time. <laughs> Can you tell I've taken my kids to the wrong specials a few times? They also wanted to share the importance of getting their lunch every day. Take your lunch, students to lunch every day and remember to pick them up after they're done. <laughs> Finally, their last piece of advice, which I thought was the most important, and several of my kids said this, they just said to be nice. They just want their teacher to be nice even when it's hard to do, and sometimes it is hard to do. I'm gonna wrap it up now, but I wanted to share some of my advice with you. When you go to your new school, find a group of people that are supportive and positive and helpful. You have to have a support network in this job because you're a not because you're a first year teacher, but because you'll always need that support network throughout your whole career. You've gotta surround yourself with the right people. I also highly recommend that you join your local association, such as NEA, if you haven't already done that. As teachers, we really have to stick together through some of the difficult times, um, and we need you to be a part of your association so that we can do that. Um, being a part of NEA, sorry, I'm stuttering, getting nervous. <laughs> being a part of NEA is really important, um, especially during your first year when you may not have as much time to be politically active and follow those things. There are people in your building um, and in your local that are there to support you and make sure that your voice is heard and that you're taken care of. So make sure that you do that. That is all I have for you. Um, it has been an honor to stand before you here today and best wishes to all of you and whatever your future holds. Thank you. That was great advice, wasn't it? <laughs> Not only from the student, but from Kendall. Let's give her another round of applause. That was fantastic. <laughs> At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Julie Laughlin, the recipient of the Outstanding Educator Award for the secondary level. Julie, if you'll come forward. In 2008, Julie graduated from Pittsburgh State University with a Bachelor of Science in Communication Education degree. And in 2010, she received her Master of Science degree in secondary education, also from Pittsburgh State University. Julie began teaching in 2009 as the debate and forensics coach and also speech and theater teacher at Pittsburgh High School. She has been an assistance forensics coach at Southeast High School and a debate theory instructor at Pittsburgh State University. She is a member of the Pittsburgh Education Association, National Forensic League District Committee, Community Development and Housing Committee for the City of Pittsburgh, Catholic Forensic League, MTSS Behavior Committee, and Technology Integration Committee for 250, both of those. In her nominations award, Julie wrote, I never wanted to be a teacher. Being a teacher was never a dream I had or a profession that anyone in my family chose. During my freshman year of college, I was enjoying my weekends judging debate at a local tournament and loving giving back to the debate community. At that time in my life, I had become conflicted with what I wanted to do with my future, so I went to seek advice from my favorite teacher, my former debate coach. 
He asked me when I was the happiest, and I said, doing debate and forensics on the weekends. His next question changed my life. He said, have you ever thought about becoming a teacher? The simple question transformed my entire perspective and future. I spent my weeknights and weekends traveling as a coach with the debate forensics kids, and I spent my days teaching students the value of being able to communicate effectively. Yes, I have the perfect job. Teaching effective communication skills to students who have yet to see the importance of it can be a task at times, but I welcome the challenge and try to make it an exciting subject. I love watching students achieve success in public speaking and conquer those public speaking fears in a short semester's worth of time. Helping students be successful with public speaking, research skills, and communication in general is something I find very rewarding. While the debate forensics teams have earned several awards throughout the years, the only ones that really matter do not sit on the shelves collecting dust or medals at home sitting in a drawer. It was watching my students challenge themselves mentally, seeing them grow as a freshman to a senior, accepting defeat, and helping each other for the betterment of the team, even when they are devastated with their own results. I do not just teach how to debate or speak. I teach them how to care, how to learn, how to push themselves outside their comfort zone. I teach them to care about others and how to push each other to be better. My students are a team first and foremost, and they carry that attitude with them throughout all competitions in life once the tournaments are over. Supporters of Julie said, I've been so impressed with Julie because of her dedication and commitment to our students. She develops great relationships with the kids as a mentor. She spends an inordinate amount of time outside the school day working with students to refine their skills and taking them to tournaments throughout eastern Kansas. The debate and forensics programs at Pittsburgh High School are a force to be reckoned with. They compete for state championships every year and have qualified for national competitions as well as a result of her instruction and leadership. She engages students in a fun and challenging way. Her classes are highly participative and require students to be actively engaged. Words that come to mind when describing Julie include vivacious, organized, dedicated, determined, responsible, enthusiastic, passionate, and one who inspires. Julie brings an unprecedented passion to teaching her students and building their confidence as well as developing their critical thinking and communication skills. Julie was instrumental in developing and approved to teach one of the first concurrent speech courses at the high school. Ms. Laughlin has a great deal of pride in her students, the school and the community, and she challenges her students to take charge in their learning. Students not only learn about the elements of speech theater, debate, or forensics, but they learn how to conduct research, write, question, think, speak, and problem solve. Our family has known Julie since her student teaching semester at Pittsburgh High School. My two sons achieved success in her debate and forensic program, including one attending college on a debate scholarship. Julie has taken her program from competing at the 4A level to successfully competing at the 5A level. She is recognized as a leader among her peers and respected in the state as a coach. I feel the greatest testament to Julie's contributions as an educator is the acknowledgement from her students that their experience in her program has changed their life. For the record of service she has created and for the potential that this service represents, Pittsburgh State University proudly recognizes Julie Laughlin as the College of Education Outstanding Secondary Educator for 2016. Welcome, Julie. Thank you very much for this award. And I have to say, you put a lot of pressure on me to come up here and do a nice job after outing me for what I do. I am very honored to have been selected by PSU as the 2016 Outstanding Secondary Educator. As I stand here before you, I want to welcome graduating student teachers, PSU faculty, friends, and family. It is an honor to be here with you today. I must say I was quite surprised to learn that I was the recipient of this award and very humbled that someone out there thought I was doing a good job educating the masses. As I look into the crowd and see future educators, I can't help but think back to my own journey to become a teacher. As Dr. Smith told you, I never wanted to be a teacher. And I know a lot of times it's a path that we've been wanting for a long time. But sometimes a simple conversation with the most inspiring teacher you have ever had can change your entire perspective. 
When I enrolled at PSU into the teacher education program, I never looked back and I could not be more thankful for the education that I received here. Now, as I finish up my seventh year of teaching, I can honestly tell you that I have just as much enthusiasm for my students now as I did seven years ago, if not more. As a student teacher, I was challenged and grew more in one semester with a classroom with actual students than any other experience I had had. I panicked the first time I was supposed to give a lesson that lasted 60 minutes and only ended up being 10. <laughs> I cried when I overheard a student say something negative about me. And I put in hours and hours of working on the show, The Diary of Anne Frank, because as I told my cooperating theater teacher from the start, if you're here, I'm here. I want the full experience. And so I had it. <laughs> I laughed and enjoyed relationships with students who I got to know throughout my theater days. And I cried again at the end of the semester when those same students gave me a party. I am so happy to say that I now teach in that same building and visit that same classroom multiple times a day to see my cooperating teacher, for Greg is my mentor and friend. The mentorship that you have had over the course of this semester is one that you will never forget, and for your sake, I hope that you treasured it and that you look upon it for those hard times when you need help. As a real teacher now, the students you meet in the fall will be your kids. There won't be anyone watching you along the way or anyone for you to turn to when your lesson only lasts a fraction of the time that it was supposed to, but you will survive. You will learn and grow so much as a first year teacher. I would like to tell the students I had my first year that I really feel like I should go back and apologize for I know I am a far better teacher today. Those countless hours you spend decorating your classroom and preparing the perfect lessons, they will become a blur over the years. But the excitement you have for your first students, never let that fade away. Always remember why you chose teaching to begin with. You chose it for the kids. You chose it for the joy. And you chose it for your own happiness that you get to experience with them every day. They'll always be your kids, and I hope you remember that even when the times get tough and you want to walk away. Don't. You chose this path for a reason. Now, before I go, I want to give you five little pearls of wisdom that I have taken to heart over the years, and I hope that you can use in your own teaching career. Number one, always be 100% yourself in the classroom. Be sincere. Be silly. Show your students that you are a real person with real feelings and real faults. This goes a long way in building relationships with them. Number two, never stop going forward. Continue to perfect your craft every year. Taking new risks with lessons, ideas, and concepts is how you become a great teacher. Never be complacent. Number three, make work friendships. Those people will get you through your toughest days. Rely on them for sanity purposes. Number four, it's okay to cry in private once the last student has left for the day. <laughs> Those tears are therapeutic, but don't let them drag on. And five, whatever you do, don't take your work home. Let your home life be a separate space from your work life. I promise that you will thank me later for this. And yes, you will be at the school until 10 p.m. most nights your first year teaching. But when you're home, you're home. Above all else, you really should just have fun. The new students you meet every year will challenge you. They will make you question your choice to go into education. They will push you beyond the limits that you knew were possible. But they will bring you more happiness than you knew existed in a classroom. So today, I congratulate all of the student teachers here. When you walk across that stage and are handed your degree, remember everything you had to do to get there and never take it for granted. You are now the teacher and the classroom is yours. So congratulations and thank you again, PSU, for this prestigious award. You can see why these two individuals were selected for this award. Both did an outstanding job and had outstanding advice for us today. Didn't you think so, students? Good job. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Each year, the Advancement Division here at Pittsburgh State University recognizes an outstanding instructor in each college. 
This year's Excellence in Teaching recipient is Dr. Gary Wickard from the Department of Psychology and Counseling. I'd like to ask Ellen Carter, representing the University Advancement, to come forward and Dr. Wickard to come forward so she can present the award. As you know, teaching is at the heart of our mission as a university. The annual Excellence in Teaching Awards were created and are funded by the PSU Foundation to recognize faculty who are outstanding teachers. On behalf of the PSU Foundation, it is my pleasure to present the Excellence in Teaching Award for the College of Education to Dr. Gary Wickard. Congratulations, Dr. Wickard. At this time, it's actually my pleasure and honor to recognize retiring faculty from the College of Education. I'd like to ask the four following gentlemen to come forward. Dr. Frank Miller, Dr. Bill Stobart, Dr. Chris Chrisman, and Dr. Kenny McDougall, if you'd come forward up here. Test, test. One of the things that I think is critically important is to recognize those that go before you. All the lessons that we've learned, and a lot of the lessons that were learned today were because of the foundations built by those people <laughs> in those positions. So I'm missing what's going on behind me here. <laughs> there we go. You know, uh, Dr. Stobart from HHPR. Dr. Frank Miller from Teaching and Leadership, Dr. Kenny McDougall from Teaching and Leadership, and Dr. Chris Chrisman from Teaching and Leadership. Tremendous insights, tremendous values. Every one of these gentlemen, I've had students come to me and talk about how much their class has meant to them, what they meant to them as mentors. Julie talked about the importance of her mentor, debate coach, and how that made an influence in her life to become a teacher. Every one of these gentlemen has had the same impact on students in their classrooms. You can't make up for the history and the value and the experience that these folks have. We can only appreciate the time that we've had with them because they've each touched everyone, not only each student, but each faculty member and each staff member within the departments and here at the university. And it's my pleasure today to give you a token of appreciation for that. What we have for each person is the watchtower here at Pitt State with a clock in it. I would say that Dr. McDougall and Dr. Crispin are entering the first year of phase retirements. Dr. Miller is actually retiring fully at the end of this semester, Dr. Stobart, <laughs> and that could be why he's a little the way he is today. <laughs> and Dr. Christman is also entering the first year, but we'll have them just for a little bit longer. But we wanted to make sure that we recognize our retirees at the first point that they enter, because sometimes they get out there and actually like it a lot better and don't come back. <laughs> but the reality is, Again, I think what's important here, and all of you will be in this position one day, think about the legacy that you want to leave. How do you want to be remembered when you exit? Go out on top, like these gentlemen do. They did a great job. We've appreciated your service. Thank you all very much. You gotta love impromptu, don't you? <laughs> okay, at this time I'd like to present the Delta Kappa Gamma Lila Vaughn Award to two very deserving students. The award is presented to one elementary student teacher and one secondary student teacher in recognition of their achievements as potential future educators. The recipients are selected by a committee of teacher education faculty. The award was created by area educational professionals who are members of the Delta Kappa Gamma. The award is named in honor of the late Lila Vaughn, a longtime educator and staff member of the Southeast Kansas Special Education Cooperative. The recipients will receive the cash award when they secure a teaching job, and it is to be used to purchase materials, materials, in setting up their first classroom. I'd like to ask Shelby Jeegan, and Anna Drenick to come forward and receive these awards. Thank you. 
We'll see them again in a little bit. <laughs> I would also like to mention that um, the uh, previous award winners are actually on a display out in the uh, reception area. When you go out later, you can take a look at that. It's, uh, it's a very nice display, and it's neat to see those, continue to see those students working in the field. Now we're to the medallion presentation. The medallion, a symbol of the College of Education and teacher licensure here, does, has special meanings. Each student will receive one of these today to wear with their regalia and to hang in their classrooms. So at graduation, we'd like for them to, to wear these. They were specially designed. I would like to point out that the, there is a gorilla split face in the center representing the university. There's an outline of an apple representing education. There's an inspirational coach, quote uh, on the front of it too. I touch the future I teach from Krista McCullough. And the cord actually represents the institution. We do have some students that teach, student teach sometimes abroad. So for instance, with our uh, partnering Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia, those students that will have taught there will actually have a blue cord representing that institution as well. So there is meaning to the medallions that they will receive today. Here's how this will work. <laughs> Mrs. Hill, where is Mrs. Hill? Right, oh, very good. <laughs> you were standing in front of me, I couldn't see you. <laughs> and, okay, she will direct you up the stairs and along this wall where you'll hand your card to Ms. Britta Hess. Britta, we'll be right here. And then Ms. Kylie Wilbur will read your name and actually the field that you're getting degree in. Once you, she does that, you'll come to the table where I will put the medallion upon you. I would like to ask our retirees to come back up on stage, please, if you would. And I would like to ask our two guest speakers to line up on that side to congratulate the students as they come upon receiving their medallions and coming into the profession. Okay. Jim Goss, majoring in English. Allison Chisholm, majoring in Family and Consumer Science. Randy Pierce, majoring in Family and Consumer Science. Kayla Ingalls, majoring in Family and Consumer Science. Morgan Stevener, majoring in Family and Consumer Science. Haley Smith, majoring in Family and Consumer Science. Liesl Heron, majoring in Family and Consumer Science. Taylor Seward, majoring in Physical Education. Adam Soley, majoring in Physical Education. Scott John, majoring in physical education. Joe Kennard, majoring in physical education. Brittany Hansen, majoring in elementary K through six. Brianna Kendrick, majoring in elementary K through six. Kayla Lind, majoring in elementary K through six. Lindsay Johnson, majoring in elementary K through six. Emily Klaus, majoring in elementary K through six. Alyssa Rucker, majoring in elementary K through six. Heather Schmidt, majoring in elementary K through six. Sarah Dwyer, 
majoring in elementary K through six. Kristen Nelson, majoring in elementary K through six. Kristen Luttrell, majoring in elementary K through six. Noelle Nightingale, majoring in elementary K through six. Michael Morton, majoring in English. Chad Dick, majoring in math. Sarah Nissler, majoring in math. Ashley Keller, majoring in math. Garrett Eccles, majoring in math. Caitlin Ogden, majoring in math. Ashley Willis, majoring in math. Zachary Dent, majoring in French. Emily Oral, majoring in elementary K through six. Ryan Thies, majoring in technology education. Jacob Decker, majoring in physical education. Elizabeth Cobb, majoring in elementary K through six. Andrea Green, majoring in elementary K through six. Lindsay Chase, majoring in elementary K through six. Risa Velasquez, majoring in elementary K through six. Brianna Awad, majoring in elementary K through six. Bethany Robinson, majoring in elementary K through six. Michaela Brown, majoring in elementary K through six. Taylor Swartz, majoring in history and government. Hannah Skidmore, majoring in math. Janelle Pugh, majoring in psychology and middle school math. Ithaca Marlier, majoring in art. Megan Kells, majoring in biology. Daniel McDill, majoring in music. Aldu Sillier, majoring in technology education. David Brown, majoring in physical education. Heath Wilson, majoring in physical education. Kip Whitley, majoring in physical education. Brad Gaddy, majoring in English. Jasmine Colvard, majoring in English. Paige Drummond, majoring in English. Holly Connors, majoring in English. Nicole Casey, majoring in English. Adam Shirley, majoring in biology. Laura Allgood, majoring in English. Audrey Rooms, majoring in English. Carmen Seeley, majoring in English.
Caitlin DeGraff, majoring in music. Taylor Shear, majoring in elementary K through six. Kristen Allen, majoring in elementary K through six. Taylor Bland, majoring in elementary K through six. Danielle Bagshaw, majoring in elementary K through six. Kristen Moore, majoring in elementary K through six. <coughs> Katie Myers, majoring in elementary K through six. <coughs> Jessica Sewing, majoring in elementary K through six. Haley Becker, majoring in elementary K through six. Jennifer Eckhart, majoring in elementary K through six. Anissa Ferrero, majoring in elementary K through six. Mercedes Judy, majoring in elementary K through six. Samantha Brown, majoring in Early Childhood Unified. Corey Dodson, majoring in Physical Education. <coughs> Janelle Collier, majoring in Early Childhood Unified. Lisa Carter, majoring in Elementary K through six. J.D. Heatherly, majoring in biology. Grace Rebel, majoring in elementary, er, English, sorry. <laughs> Shelby Jagan, majoring in elementary K through six. Anna Drenick, majoring in English. And again, graduates, you can wear those with your regalia at graduation to note your success in becoming teachers. This time, we're going to administer the teacher's oath, and I'm going to ask uh, Anna and Shelby to come back. For, uh, We're going to ask Anna and Shelby to lead the teacher's oath. It's on the back of your programs today. And we'd like to ask the student teachers to stand, and you'll read this with. We can follow along with your own out there. Ready? I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won gains of those educators in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of my students all strategies known to be effective, avoiding busy work in favor of work with real meaning to the students and their families. I will remember that there is art to teaching as well as science and that warm sympathy and understanding may outweigh the textbook reading or the multiple choice test. I will work with my colleagues to inspire one another to achieve excellence. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed to help my students. 
If it is given me to enhance a life through teaching, all thanks. But it may also be within my power to cast a shadow over a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. I will remember that I do not teach a lesson plan or a reading deficiency, but a human being whose skills may affect the person's future family and economic stability. My efforts will aim to teach the whole child and help that child develop in mind and spirit. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of teaching those who seek my help. I will be a competent, committed, caring professional throughout my career. Congratulations. Let's give him a hand. Welcome to the profession. I would, at this time, like to ask our two guest speakers to come back up to the podium, if you would, please. Julia. In recognition of their outstanding accomplishments as well, and our pride in both of them, we have the medallion with the teacher's oath inscribed on a plaque for them to hang in their classrooms. So we want them both to have those. Thank you, Thank you very much. Before we dismiss, I'd like to take a moment to thank the many people who helped make this morning's events possible. We'd like to recognize and thank Cricket Moore. Where's Cricket at? Back there. And Cricket's going to be leaving us here in a couple weeks, and she's done an outstanding job with this ceremony for several years. Let's give Cricket a round of applause. <laughs> Mrs. Amanda Hill, our outstanding usher. <laughs> and bringing us in. Thank you, Amanda. Let's give her a round of applause as well. I also want to say thank you to Karen Lasota, the Senior Administrative Assistant at the Dean's Office for background. Is she still in the back? OK. Uh, in helping with this event as well. And so we want to thank Karen. So if you would, let's give her a round of applause. And very importantly, I'd like to thank Kylie and Britta are announcers up here this day. Thank you both very much. I know Jody, Jody Stuhlzatz, another worker, was in here earlier. Is Jody still in the room? OK. Uh, a final? Really? Oh. OK, that seems important enough. Well, let's, we want to thank Jody as well. I want to especially thank you guests for coming today. and and cooperating teachers for being here to support these students, because I know you've supported them all the way through. It's an outstanding success and an outstanding accomplishment, and welcome to the profession. We do have a reception out front with some, uh, some food and some things that you, in places that you can just talk, so uh, take advantage of that. Uh, there is a, also available will be pictures out front, so if you want to have pictures taken with, with your friends or with your cooperating teachers or with your faculty members or even with your family, we have a photographer out front and some displays, so take advantage of that. Thank you again for coming today. Have a good day.